Okay, we're going to talk about pre-operation checklist and uh, looking over your tractor before you start it. I've already raised the hood on this unit. Uh, this is in the operator's manual. Everything, uh, always refer to your operator's manual. The information is there. So I'm going to walk around more, in, not in the order of what it's in the manual, but in the order of the tractor. So the first thing you want to do is check your engine oil level on this M5. It happens to be on this side. You got a dipstick, you check it for full. You also want to check the engine compartment for any debris. This happens to be uh, spring and it's bird season. And we had a bird nest getting started right down here. You also want to look up in your DPS area. If you've been running the tractor, be careful, this will get hot. But make sure you don't have any bird's nest building up on top of the DPS. One thing I find very handy for that type of thing and or cleaning the radiator is a blower. You can take that and blow that debris away from your engine compartment. Alright, you want to look at, the, at your radiator screen, your oil cooler for dirt buildup. Again, you can use a blower to blow that material out or a uh, special wand for an air compressor hose that's made to go in and, and blow that out. There is a removable screen on the front. You can take that out if it's particularly dirty. And of course, blow out the screens on the front of the tractor. Your air cleaner is located in the front. It has a dust ejector bulb on it. If you're in really dirty conditions, you may want to look at your air, air cleaner itself. There's some latches here that allow you to access that. We do not recommend blowing out an air cleaner filter with uh, high pressure air. You could damage that. There's an inner cleaner, air cleaner inside that as well. If you remove the inner cleaner, air, inner air cleaner, change it. Don't leave it. Don't take it out and put it back in. You, you take a chance of putting dirt into your engine. All right, as you come on around this side of the tractor, you have a water separator on the tractor. It's part of your fuel filter system. There's a little red float ring in here. If you have water in that, that ring's gonna float. And there's a pet cock at the bottom that'll allow you to drain that water out without changing your fuel filter. So that's something to keep observed on. Then just walk around and look at the general situation of the tractor. Always pay attention to your wheel bolts. We tighten these before we ship them, but especially when they're new, and the operator will, manual will tell you in the first 50 hours to retorque all those wheel bolts. They, do, they can come loose because of paint. So front bolts, rear bolts, both. As you come to the rear of the tractor, You can check your transmission oil. There's a dipstick back here for that. You want your loader on the ground when you're doing that because it takes a bunch of oil out of the system. Uh, this yellow lever happens to be a 540 economy PTO option that's on this tractor. And this is your fill port for the oil. And then just check the condition of the linkage on the back of the tractor and make sure everything is, is uh, in proper condition. Also, if you're not a bad idea, to turn on your lights, make sure all your lights are working, those kind of things. We'll talk a little bit about tractor operation next. Okay, now we're going to talk about operating, starting the tractor, the operator's controls. Again, always use your operator's manual. Everything's in here. I probably won't remember quite everything to talk about. We're going to go around the sta operator station uh, and cover some of the things. So right here in the corner is your four-wheel drive engagement lever. Down is off, and you just pull it up to engage it. Of course, you can do that with the tractor running, but not while you're in gear and driving. Then we have a clutch pedal, or what I like to call is an inching pedal. It is it is a hydraulic clutch pack on this tractor. So this pedal should either be 
completely disengaged and you can shift gears or completely out under a load because you don't want to slip this clutch under load. Now you can use it to inch and control your speed going backwards or, or forward if you're trying to hook up to your loader bucket or an implement on the rear. Uh, but that's in a non-load situation. Uh, otherwise, select the proper gear for your application to where you're not, where you don't have your foot on the clutch. You do have a hydraulic shuttle control that will allow you to go forward or reverse. It's operating that same hydraulic clutch pack, so just use common sense. You can do it at any engine RPM or speed, but logically, when you're going faster, you want to use your bring it to neutral, use your brake to kind of stop the tractor before you change directions, especially if you have a heavy load. This is your uh, uh, warning flasher lights, and then you have a pedal here that allows you to adjust your steering column position up or down. Brakes on the other side, a lock that ties both brake pedals together. Going down the road, you want to have your brake, brake pedals tied together so that you don't just step on one brake. Uh, we'll go from there, we'll talk about the instrument cluster. So I'll turn the, the key on briefly. This will light up and then it's going to go out. But in here are the symbols and things you can find in your owner's manual that tell you what, I'll do that again, tell you what's going on with the tractor. Uh, hopefully this shows up in the sunlight. Alright, all of that is in the in the uh, tractor. On this side of the steering column we have our uh, two lights for regeneration. You have the parts regeneration light and you have the inhibit light. That's the one you don't want to use. This is a constant RPM light uh, and button and it has to do with trying to hold your engine RPM steady. So if you're for instance bush hogging or whatever, if you set this constant RPM it'll do what it can to maintain your RPMs within the horsepower of that engine uh, giving it more fuel or less fuel depending on the load. All right, these are front work lights. Then this is your mode control for the dash and some adjustments so when you have your dash up you can change your displays uh, to see what's going on with the tractor. You can set things with the mode control. Uh, over here we have the uh, turn signals as well as the uh, light, the standard lights on the tractor. And then we go to our loader control valve and on the loader control valve you have a locking button that can be pushed in and that freezes the valve to where it can't be moved accidentally and or you can push pull that back out. This lever here is for the uh, self-leveling uh, one position is for hydraulic self-leveling, one position turns it off. Then we move to our transmission. You have a six-speed transmission on this tractor with a high-low range, giving you 12 speed. This lever is your parking control. It's a parking pawl in the transmission. Whenever you're at rest and not using the tractor, that needs to be engaged. I recommend having your gearbox in neutral when you do that. And we have uh, the hydraulic remote valves. This tractor has two. This is your three-point hitch control, position control here. This is a draft control. Uh, I would run it back unless you're using a draft implement. This is the power takeoff engagement. You push that down and twist to engage the PTO. All you have to do is push to release it. And then this back here is uh, an automatic RPM setting. You can set a high side and a low side so you can have two push of the button RPM settings on this tractor. Uh, that information is covered in the manual on how to go through and set that. It's not too bad. It may take a couple of, of tries and it can be set with a key switch or with the engine not running just with a key switch on. But it goes over that procedure. Your seat, of course, has armrests and is adjustable fore and aft, as well as has a weight adjustment here. And it is equipped with a seat belt during operation. 
you need to wear that seat belt. The uh, ROPS won't do you any good without a seat belt on. And there's also one other lever back here behind the seat. It's a little hard to see, but that controls the rate of drop of your three-point hitch and or can shut it off entirely. So sometimes these things get moved by accident. The three-point hitch won't go down. That's probably what's going on. Uh, on startup of the tractor, you need to be in neutral. You have to push the clutch pedal in, and then you just turn the key. RPMs were set a little high. I was playing with the RPM management button. Um, but when you're starting a tractor in cold weather, they do recommend you start and keep it below uh, 1400 RPMs if their ambient temperature is at 32 or below uh, for three minutes, I believe. The colder the temperature, the longer that that warm-up period is. There's a chart in the book in regards to that. And there's also a warm-up period for the transmission. So if it's really cold, uh, northern climates, not southern Illinois, you may need to let the tractor warm up for a significant period of time before you operate. Uh, there's also a heater in the def tank. And again, uh, when you get down into the well below zero temperatures, you may actually have to start the tractor, let it run just a little bit, shut it off, and restart it. I think that's at minus 22. So this is an open station tractor. I don't think too many people will be running it in those kind of temperatures. Um, so that kind of covers cold weather starting, warm up, and basic operation. Thank you.